I'm Peter with Prom HVAC. We're out here uh, doing a quarterly filter change and we have a unit that had a leak earlier in the year. We had to schedule a time to come out and work on it when the building wasn't occupied. And now we're here doing the quarterly filter change and we're gonna check one of these circuits for the leak. And this is the equipment. We got a compressor on this side. Doing our filter changes and this is a 20 ton package unit, rooftop unit. So we've got a and you know one compressor does basically half of a coil on the condenser coil and the evap coil and the other compressor does the other half sometimes they split it uh, top and bottom sometimes they split it half and half usually there's a wall in between that so it will be two separate got this unit opened up now and we've got a 91,000 BTU compressor on this side it's a 120 ton gas pack that's the heat exchanger there it's the evap coil that's probably about six feet wide somewhere in there give or take a foot um, so this coil will be split into two circuits so you got the top half here you got your suction line and your liquid line coming in so this top half being that's a smaller portion of the coil i'm assuming that's the 91,000 btu side and then we've got this compressor here which the uh, model number's gone off of it but according to this data label Let's see here yeah one circuit's taking 20 20.6 pounds the other one's taking 14.7 uh, so one of these compressors is slightly larger than the other and this is the circuit for this compressor and the coil the condenser coil is the same way um, you've got your lines coming into the coil here on this side and this is the circuit over here this compressor is the one that was lower earlier in the year Let's get up on top here yep so you can see there this condenser coil here is by itself so there's no coil behind this panel this condenser coil is solely for this compressor and i can see a difference in the evap coil from here up so from here up all the way across is going to this compressor and this coil so we've got everything taken apart i'm using a am probe leak detector this is a ultrasonic you can use whatever you like i like being able to hear it and uh this is the model uld 300 put some headphones on and then i'm just going to go to town on everything in the circuit all these fins here or all these parts of the coil there on both sides and then i'm going to go over the condenser coil for this circuit and see if i can't identify where we're losing refrigerant so we found the leak um my ultrasonic was going off up in here also see if i can get in here this pipe here this one had oil residue on it it's shiny now because i've been using some bubble solution on it but it had oil on it and if you look i can get a good angle right there 
on the side of this braze joint right here. There's bubbles coming out. I'm gonna put some more solution on that. And you can see it bubble. It's very small, but that small leak over the course of uh, five or six years since this unit has been installed whenever that started. Um, you know, it causes the unit to run low over time, higher energy expense, uh, and we uh, turned that circuit off until we could get back out here and fix it. So now we're gonna recover the refrigerant out of that circuit, and we're gonna braze this uh, joint back up, pull a good vacuum, and recharge it, and get her back going. So we finished the uh, recovery. I used the field piece recovery machine and it's got some pretty easy to follow directions right there on the side. And let's go back to this way in. So from the factory, this circuit had 14.7 pounds in it. We've recovered uh, almost nine pounds or 16 ounces in a pound. We recovered eight pounds, 14.25 ounces. So now we're gonna braze this leak. Close then we're gonna pull a vacuum and recharge it. vacuum started now And here we've got our vacuum pulled down to under four or 500. It's been holding, it's creeping up. Uh, but it's been like that for about five minutes. We're gonna go ahead and charge this unit up. And it's gonna hold. Fourteen point seven pounds. All 
right, so we've got this unit done. It's been running for about five minutes. And the pressures are teetering up and down about 15 to 20 PSI. Uh, it's about 60, 65 degrees inside and it is 55 degrees outside. So we're not really in the conditions that would be cooling. So these numbers are a little lower than what I would like to see, but we don't typically check cooling charge levels in the winter months or the cooling months. And this is a gas pack, so we can't put it in heat mode and check that. But according to this graph here, we're within a few PSI and degrees of what I would project it to be if these lines kept traveling down past what they are. So we'll check it again come uh, summertime. Our next scheduled maintenance is out in July and it's January now. So uh, we'll come out and check it before then just to make sure it's right. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content like this.